What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, today we're going to be talking about something that people have been asking me, um, slash, like, something that I think is good to talk about moving into this year's season. Uh, we know what the requirements for the 2020 World Championships are, we know where it's going to be, and today you and I are going to talk about how to formulate your path to get from point A to point B and attend the 2020 World Championships in London. I know some people have complaints about, you know, it being overseas and the money aspect and the travel aspect or whatever, that's all secondary. First, you got to earn yourself an invite. And if you don't do that, then you're not even going to be able to consider going to London, right? I mean, you can go and play the London Open, but that's no fun. You want to get that invite, don't you? So today we're going to talk about how you, your child, whomever close to you wants to get this invite and how we're going to do it, all right? So this is the structure of the year. There are league challenges, league cups, um, special events, regionals, and international championships. International championships being the tournament that gives you the most points, but is also the most expensive and most difficult to get play slash get to. There are going to be, so we're going to pull up league challenges to start. League challenges are going to be, look, it says right here, best finish eight per year. So that means it doesn't matter if you get the league challenge finishes now, or it doesn't matter if you get them in May. You can play eight league challenges in the month of May or June and get your finishes by then, and it'll still be fine. You can do it at any point in the season, but your best eight will count. That means if you have nine firsts, only eight will count towards your total. And we have 15 for our league challenge win. So theoretically, you could earn um, 120 if I did my math correctly there. Uh, towards your world's invite, which is a good chunk of your world's invite. So just right off the bat with that plus cups, you can earn your entire invite. It's just, it's a little unrealistic that you do that, but it is a possibility that you can do it and you have all year to do it. You don't have to like do them um, immediately. These are a monthly event, so you can do them at your like leisure. I know your local game stores have them. I have a ton every month. Um, these are These are very good events and these are events that I think Definitely help and grow the community. Uh, so then we have League Cups, which are once per quarter things for your local game store. And these are the quarters where uh, the seasons, or it may be that the uh, store will schedule League Cups. So say you have your local game store. Um, I'll use Dream Wizards as an example for mine. Um, for those of you who live in the DMV, Maryland, Virginia area, you know what that store is. But Dream Wizards will get their, their email and it'll say, hey, you guys are allowed to schedule your cup. And a lot of the times your TOs will talk to players or they'll have a coordinated system amongst the other TOs in the area where they're going to be like, hey, um, store number two, what time are you doing your cup? Let's coordinate so we don't clash on the same day. But one thing that the local game stores may or may not do is try to plan around regionals because they can't always plan around regionals. If it overlaps with the regionals weekend, so be it. It happens that way because there are other events that local game stores have to cater to. For example, Magic pre-releases, um, Magic tournaments, you know. We aren't the only card game. We have to be courteous to our card game neighbors and, you know, be there and be be as it may. It might conflict and you might miss a cup or two. But like these are the seasons, I'm not going to go over them in depth. You guys can find them on your own. But as it is with the challenges, it's eight per year instead of the two per quarter like it was last year, which means, again, you can get all eight of yours now if you want to, or you can get all eight of yours later down the line. Um, I recommend getting to as many cups early and playing as you can because just having something in that finish, like a top eight or a top 16 or even a top four, like just having something in that spot filled feels better than having to go to cups towards the end of the year and scramble for those last little bit of points when you know that your entire invite is on the line. Um, that, that little bit of stress is something that can really get to you. Um, but also it's like one of those things where it's like if you don't want to go for the invite right now, and you know that you're going to have a little bit of busy stuff in the first half of the year, like maybe you can't really play until November or December because of life or you know other things getting in the way, don't feel pressure to play. You don't have to. You can come back into the middle of the year and make that late season push because you have all year to get those challenges and cups. And on the off chance that you do win eight cups and eight challenges, bada bing, bada boom, you are at your world's invite of 500, 500 points, even though it's 520 that you will have earned, you will earn your invite off the back of that. I believe there was only one player to do that uh, in two seasons ago, and that was Caleb Gettimer, I think. I might be completely wrong in the top 16 race. And it's highly unlikely that this even happens. But if it does, you've done it, and I don't think anyone can say anything because you've won eight cups proving you're the best in your area and eight challenges proving you're the best in your area. So these are important, I think. 
Cups are usually held on weekends. I don't, I haven't really seen weekday cups, whereas challenges can be held on weekdays or weekends. Um, cups are important. Um, attend them. Get them out of the way. I already have one finish of my own out of the eight. Ideally, I'm looking for eight wins because I'm going for top 16. Um, so nothing, anything short of a win is a little bit of points that I am leaving on the table because I'm assuming that my fellow competitors will be getting eight wins. Um, so those are cups for you. And then we have special events, which are equivalent in points to regionals, as you can see here. But And they're shared with regional championships in terms of the best finish limit. So if your SPEs and regionals will fall under the same and your best six will be considered throughout the year. As of right now, but the only difference between SPEs and regionals is SPEs don't have to award you any cash prizing or any of that. Um, as of right now, there is none listed. But for players going for top 16 and stuff like that, the LATAM special event schedule is pretty important. And last year, US and Canada did have Origins as a special event. And I think it will probably make a comeback due to it's like a lot of people showing up. Europe had a good number of special events last year also. Um, so did Oceania. So if you're from those regions, uh, keep an eye out for those. And then we have the Pokemon Regional Championships. Um, this is the schedule that we have uh, slated to us. So a regionals is something you attend. It's a two-day event. You attend the first day, and depending on if you can go 6-2-1 in the Masters Division, or uh, it, for juniors and seniors, it's more of a just can you hit the mark you need to hit to get to top eight usually, um, and you move on to top eight. I don't think they've ever had a top 32 at regionals. Maybe one seniors regionals there was a top 32. Um, but other than that, it's always been like a top eight. Um, if you attend one of these regionals, you go on Saturday or you go on Friday, sorry, Saturday morning, you'll start play as a master or junior or senior, finish up your X amount of rounds. And if you're a master, six, two, one is the record required to move on to the second day. And if you do attain that record, you are guaranteed a slot, no matter what, in the second day of play. Now in the second day of play, anything can happen. So you can win, you know, four out of your five games and move into top eight, or you can lose four games immediately and just sign that drop slip on the online website, go pick up your prizing and get out of there. Um, but uh, a word of advice for those of you who want to win the tournament, going 6-2 into 6-2-1 is no longer becoming a viable strategy because more and more people are making these day twos. And for example, something like Collinsville, where we had like 100 plus people on day two, um, it felt really bad to lose two games because all of a sudden you were out of the money, which is top 32. Um, at a regionals, getting top 32 will earn you $250. Uh, and then top 16, 500, top eight, more, yada, yada, yada. And it'll just, you know, just go up the food chain like this. Um, so that's, that's where like getting that top 32 berth usually can recover the money you spent on going to the regionals. In my opinion, that's what I look at it is in my head, because you also get box and, and you get a box for top 32, which also can cover if you saw it on the spot, another uh, 70 to $80. And then the top 64 pricing is 18 packs, which is not amazing, but it's like better than just leaving empty handed, which can happen in a day two of a regional, which has happened to me in Dallas when we had like, I think close to a hundred maybe like 70 something. <clears throat> and I went like two, four and I walked out with nothing at 66th place. So, and this is the schedule. Uh, there's standard and expanded events. So you can kind of take your pick amongst the litter, depending on where you live. If, um, the closest ones to you are expanded, for example, West coast, I think has more primarily expanded events. You can kind of hunker down and focus on those, um, more so than not. Um, but it does seem like we have a good like grip of them in a row. Like for example, we have two standard back to back, and then we have two expanded back to back. But these are two different coasts. Like Richmond is on the very, very east coast nearby where I live, and Portland is the very west coast. So I think we'll see a very different audience at both of these. Um, Daytona and San Diego are standard, and the weekend before Daytona or two weekends before will be the release of a new set and an international, which I'll talk into also in a second. Dallas and Collins are back-to-back -back expanded, fundamentally different areas, uh, and there is a standard tournament in between, which is the Oceania IC. There is um, Toronto, which is the lone standard wolf in March, and then we have two expanded once again. So we've got a good stretch of January to April, really, where like we only have expanded events, um, North Carolina and Salt Lake, and then the back half of the year is chunky and loaded with Albany. Fort Wayne or Santa Clara, depending on what is easier for you to attend, and then Milwaukee. Um, this weekend is a little bit strange to me because both of these are uh, solid locations, like this for the West Coast and this for the Midwest. So it's going to be a little bit of a split attendance. So I think numbers will be a little bit lower. Um, unfortunately, for Santa Clara, I think it is lower. Uh, and then you have two European regionals announced um, as of now, but we don't know what else will be announced soon. Uh, they're just waiting to hear back. And the regional payout is what I showed earlier. 
This is your bread and butter. You have six of these. You have six of these to earn points. And even if you finish in the top 128 and earn 40 points, which I think is a very reasonable finish to expect um, as a newer player, a fledgling player, even myself, I can expect to finish in this, this little berth right here. Uh, if you get six of these, you're sitting at 240 points, which is about half your invite, and you can clean up the rest hypothetically on uh, League Cups and Challenges. Um, like I said, again, League Cups and Challenges are going to be a big part of carrying you to your invite, and that's a big way to get your invite in the 2020 season. And then the big the big kicker itself is the International Championships. There are four of these per year, and there there is a BFL of four, so you can literally earn points at all of them. Uh, these are the International Big Daddy, like, well, you can eat buffet style like you come in the cream of the crop the best players in the world are here uh it's basically a mini world championships with a lot less on the line um the first one of the year takes place in latin america which is the happening in sao paulo brazil from november 17 17 and all of these are standard and barring i think eu and na every new one has a new set introduced to us to play which is um pretty cool i think because uh, it gives some of the best players in the world a chance to test out their medal against uh, the other better players in the world, going to a new region. Um, yeah. So this is happening. And then Melbourne is Feb to 21 to 23. Berlin is 17 to 19 in April. And then this is, the NAIC has not been announced yet, but it's more than likely going to be Columbus again, given history. And that's June 26 to 28. And the 28th of June, or like two days after or whatever, does mark the end of the season. That is the end of the marking period for when tournaments can be held, how many more points can go into the system. So by ch this weekend, you got to get your points in. You got to get everything you got to get done. If there's an error with something you're being put into the system, any of that sort, get it done quick. Get it cleared out. Get it done because that is when the season is over. That is when officially everything is in the books. Like check mark, it's in there. TPCI is going to run it through. Send out those emails for your invites. And all of a sudden, the next step for everybody is the world championships. Got it? Capiche? Cool. Um, this is a point payout for international championships. Very rarely do we get to this. Um, we didn't even get that at NAIC this year. Um, we were very close both the past two years, but usually this is what happens at 800, uh, at 80. This is what happened in Europe, and this is what happened in NA, where top 256 got 80 points. But this is, you know, top 128 gets 100, which is a lot of points. That's a fifth of just 20% of your invite on the spot. And realistically, if you're a better player, you can hope to try to play for these higher spots um, and earn a little more points. But the real... Um, Added bonus is the um, little bit of change, like money you get and the packs. The pack payout is very nice. Uh, I remember I top 16 at IC and got two boxes, and then I top 8 at another and got four boxes, which was pretty cool. Um, to, you can get stipends to go to these. Um, these are just done quarterly. As of right now, it's the stipend quarters are just as soon as the next IC is over, the next stipend IC begins. So as, for example, Latin America, um, as soon as Latin America IC finishes and those points are in the books... Every, all the points earning from last NAIC to LATAM IC will be calculated and the top 16 will earn travel award slash stipends to go. The top four will earn a travel award, which is equivalent to $2,500 if it's out of country. If you're eight, under 18, that's $3,500 out of country for your parents or supervising adult. And then um, otherwise, it's um, 2000 in country if it is for you. And yeah, and those are, and then five through sixteen just earn a thousand to go, which is more than enough to cover the flight and sometimes even the hotel, in my opinion. Um, but the stipends this year are a little bit wonky because you can get up to eight finishes in both the cup and challenge quarters every single time, which is either a oversight on their part or a clarification that needs to be brought in. Uh, but as of now, it's kind of stupid to go for those, and you can just pay for the ICs yourselves. Um, so five hundred uh, winning an IC will get you the five hundred points and a lot of fame and glory. So that is that is the easiest way, I guess, to get there. The qualification periods are listed here. Um, it is top 16 North America. They get an auto by the day two, 22 for Europe, 8 for Latin America, and it looks like 8 for Oceania. That was already announced, um, subject to change, I believe. Um, but yeah, that is, that is how you can earn your invite to the World Championships. This was the 2019 World Championships, 2020. We are headed to London. Um, it is going to be an international affair. It'll be a good time uh don't don't 
not know how to get there. This is your information guide. This is your step-by-step guide on how to figure out your season. Plan it out right now. Look at the regional schedule. Look at what you can attend. Start making plans already well in advance because don't be caught at the last minute being like, I want to go to Knoxville, Tennessee, and it's $400 because it's football. It's a football game day weekend. And that is that is actually the case. It's not like a hypothetical scenario. It is a game day weekend. Don't be like, I want to go to Portland and then look at tickets and see that it's like $400. So you can't afford it. Like Lake, Lake part of the season, sure, maybe you need to push, make a regional push to get those last couple points. But otherwise, plan well in advance. Get those things out of the way. If you're going to do international championships, a lot more planning is required. So start now for something like Brazil. Uh, I've already booked my plan. I've already made all of my plans. I'm already good to go. So that's one thing you got to keep in mind, guys. And if you enjoy the video, leave a like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. If you have any questions, hit me up. I can help you guys plan out your season and your invite. Coaching, everything, just hit me up. I can get you guys there. And otherwise, thank you for watching, and good luck on getting that 2020 Worlds invite in London, boys and girls.